But again, this is not something that God says on the Sabbath day you should rest and keep it holy unless your employer says not to or unless your coach says not to. <laughs> it's, it's straight up clear in this book that we're supposed to rest every seventh day because God did it and he said, I want you to rest and I want you to keep it holy. So those of us who, who don't necessarily have jobs, those of us who are doing a good job at just resting and taking a break and not completing a bunch of tasks that we have left to do, are we keeping it holy? I mean, we come in here and we act nice for a while, but when you go back home, <laughs> is the rest of the day holy? Do you honor God with, with at least one day out of the week? We're, we're into God's top five now. <laughs> All right, getting into number eight. Back to the scripture again. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Question number eight, do you ever use God's name in a non-holy manner? Ouch. I mean, it's bad enough. I hear, you know, on Sunday mornings, oh my God, I swear to God. That's taking the most holy name that there ever was and turning it into common phraseology. And we just bounce it around and misuse it all the time. And we don't even think about it. It just kind of slips through. And even worse, we take God's name and turn it into a curse. I can't think of anything that I haven't heard somebody ask God to damn. And I really, I, I have this belief that many of the things that are messed up in this country is because someone has asked God to curse it to hell. The word damn means to curse to hell. If you put God's name before it, it becomes a prayer. How many things have we cursed to hell in God's name? Not even thinking it. And turning God's name into a, a curse word. Or Jesus Christ. How many times have you heard that as a curse word? His name alone. It's not good. And if you don't use it yourself, you know that's good, but do you allow it to go on around you? If somebody says that kind of word, I heard it last night at a family gathering, and I was on the other side of the room, I didn't think of it, but how many times do we say, excuse me, could you not use that language around me? Or almost even easier, but worse than that is, how many times do we let it into our home as entertainment? TV shows and movies are riddled with abuse of God's name. Do we change the channel? Do we turn it off? Do we get up and walk out of the theater? Do we throw the book away that has that in it? I'd say most of the time we don't. And God is absolutely not honored when we misuse his name. And that's an absolute breaking of the top three commandments. Number nine. You notice these are getting harder. You shall not make your, for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for their sin of their fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Number nine, do you have any idols? Now, back in the day, when Jesus was saying this, idols, they, they didn't have mass communication or electronics. They made their idols out of little pieces of stone or clay or what have you. They carved them out of wood, carried them around with them. Today, we don't do that. We have mass communication. Our idols come through TV. Our idols come in electronic form. Sometimes there are people. We've got sports heroes. We've got movie stars, we've got musicians. I think it's horrible that we take a show and just label it American Idol. I mean, okay, you have a show where people sing, no problem. But to call it American Idol and to put so much money and so much energy into supporting it, how can we do that? And this, I'm not just picking on one show. We turn television itself into an idol and the people on it into idols. And it doesn't have to be people. We can, our iPods, our cell phones, our computers, our cars, our lawns. I think, I think a pretty good test for what we idolize in this world comes from time and attention. I think if you measure 
how much time you give to God. Reading the word, praying, worshiping, singing. How much time do you give to God? And then compare that with how much time you spend with whatever else it is. And this is a personal question. You know exactly you know, where it is that you struggle with this. How much time do you sink into your music or your TV or following sports or whatever it is? If that is more than what you give to God, I think that's a danger of creating it into an idol. And, I mean, some of these little things we can carry around with us just like they did in the old days. So why do we do all that? How can we, how, we all raised our hands and said we love Jesus. How can we say we love Jesus and turn our backs on him like that? Well, the reason that we do it is because we make ourselves God. We become the rulers of our life. We do what we want, when we want it, and how we want it. And we become the God of us. Which leads us to question number 10. And back to the scripture. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Do you worship any gods besides the one true God? Now normally somebody asks the question, of course we worship God. You know, we don't have the, the old gods like, like, like they used to, like Baal and Molech and, or Thor and, and Ra and all these foreign gods. We've gotten rid of that and turned ourselves into God and worship ourselves and take care of ourselves and whatever it is that makes us happy is what we want to do. And we've completely ignored the law that God has given us. There are so many others. I mean, these are just the top ten. I mean, if you think about it, you're not supposed to have sex before you get married. You're supposed to pay your taxes. You're not supposed to gossip. I mean, simple things that are the law of God. So think of those questions that we ask so often in this church. Who is your Lord and Savior? Lord has a denotation. It's not just somebody that you call a name. It's not just a title. It's who you are obedient to and follow. And we've making our, made ourselves the Lord. Do you trust him? <laughs> if we did, I think our lives would be a little different. Now, some of you might be sitting and thinking, yeah, but we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. And that's very true. We're in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. But Romans 3.31 says... Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. Jesus made it super easy. Somebody asked him once, Jesus, what's the most important commandment? The, th the thing that we need to follow the most? If you'd put it on the top of all the laws, which would you pick? And he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With everything you are, you're to love God. And he said, and the second one is just as important. You should love your neighbor just like yourself. Okay, so if we can get rid of those Ten Commandments and replace it with that, that sounds easy, right? Love God, all right. We love God. Or do we? We've all admitted we're liars, we're thieves, we're adulterers, we're murderers. We dishonor our parents, we ignore the Sabbath, we misuse God's name, and we worship ourselves. Is that loving God? That's kind of like saying to your spouse, sweetheart, I love you so much, but I'm going to go sleep with the neighbor now. Or your family, kids, I'm so glad I have you, you're so wonderful, but I'm not going to feed you ever again. Or, or think of your parents, parents, I'm, I'm so glad you raised me, thank you for everything, I'm never going to talk to you ever again. That's not love. Or our neighbors. Okay, let's think about our neighbors. We're all neighbors. We love each other. We get along. 